Welcome to the Research Cortex. Grab a cup of coffee or tea and take a break with another math snack. While instructional videos are useful in their own right, sometimes seeing things done incorrectly can be just as enlightening. With that in mind, we're going to take a look at some mathematical fallacies. We're going to start by taking a look at some of the more simple and obvious ones. Some of the terminology I'm going to use was coined by E.A. Maxwell in his classic 1963 book, Fallacies in Mathematics. We're going to start with what he calls a howler. This is a nonsensical action or procedure that coincidentally gives us a correct answer for a specific or even several specific cases. So let me give you an example. Let's look at the fraction 16 over 64. And I want to tell you to reduce this fraction to simplest form. First, we're going to do this the correct way. So how do we actually reduce a fraction? So remember that we need to divide the numerator and the denominator by their greatest common factor. Well, in this case, the greatest common factor, since 64 is actually equal to 4 times 16, the greatest common factor is actually 16 itself. So if we divide the top by 16, then 16 over 16 over 16 times 4 divided by 16. So we get 1 over 4. Okay, so that's the correct way to do it. Now, I'm going to do it a slightly different way. It's going to give the exact answer, 1 over 4, that we know to be correct. So let's follow this line of reasoning. 16 over 64. Well, I know that when there's a fraction that I have a times b over b times c, oh, I can just cancel the stuff that looks the same. So I can just cancel these sixes right here and get one over four. So what happened? We all know that canceling those two sixes was wrong, ridiculous even, but I got the right answer, so who cares? We care because this nonsensical action doesn't work all the time. It was a complete coincidence that this yielded what was ultimately the correct answer because I was counting on the idea that a times b over b times c can, can and at that point I can cancel the b's because there's the common factor. But in this case, 16 does not equal to 1 times 6. 64 is not equal to... 6 times 4, and we can't cancel that way. That's not true. Let's move on to some more subtle mistakes that can show up, or what Maxwell terms fallacies. Maxwell distinguishes the howler, which he terms more of an innocent mistake, from an actual fallacy. A fallacy results in the wrong conclusion, but via a seemingly logical thought process. So what are some possible ways that this can happen? Well, you can follow logic perfectly, but you've applied a rule or a definition incorrectly, or you may straight up pervert a definition. You take only half the definition and ignore the rest. Then there's an entire other class of fallacies and proofs called induction fallacies, and I'll make a separate video on induction fallacies. They deserve to be treated on their own. Let's talk about the first one, applying a rule incorrectly. I'm going to prove to you that 1 equals 2, and here's how I'm going to do it. First, let's let x equal y, and I want to also make the point here that neither x is 0 nor y is 0, otherwise it's just silly. All right, so now what I'm going to do, I can multiply by x, sure, why not? because x and y aren't 0, so it doesn't wipe the problem out. So that means that x squared is equal to x times y. Okay, well, if I subtract anything I want to from both sides, it doesn't change the equality, so as long as I do the same thing. So I decided I'm going to subtract a y squared. So we have x squared minus y squared is equal to xy minus y squared. Now I can square y just fine. I can subtract it off because I'm doing the same thing to both sides. No big deal. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor these expressions. I see some common terms here. The left side is a difference of squares, which factors into x plus y times x minus y. And the right side 
has an x minus y as well, x minus y, and then times a y. Great. Well, now I want to simplify this expression. So I'm going to cancel out the x minus y. That's the common term. So we get that x plus y is equal to y. Now, if x equals y, so remember up here, x equals y, then that means that x plus y is equal to y plus y. So that's equal to 2y is equal to y. Now, the last step is that we can cancel the y's, but we get that 2 is equal to 1. So what went wrong? The logic was sound, so it must mean the math is broken. How about we go back through this a little bit carefully? Some fallacies will leave good clues that they exist. In our case, a ridiculous conclusion. We know that 1 can't equal 2. But actually, finding the fallacy can be a bit subtle. Likely, some of you may have seen this particular trick before, but we'll go through it anyway. Now, the same trick that we used to get that we can replace uh, x with y at this line, namely the fact that x equals y, implicitly tells us that x minus y is equal to 0. So x equals y, if and only if their difference is 0. So what, where else did we find that? We found that right here. Well, from this step to this step, I canceled the x minus y term. But from over here, implicitly by declaring x minus y to be 0 in the beginning, I've divided by 0. And that breaks the rule that allows us to cancel like terms. So this, this was the actual fallacy. We replied a rule incorrectly. This cancellation of like terms only applies when you're not dividing by zero. In general, many examples of this are more subtle. We are currently exploring the more obvious ones so that it becomes easier to spot subtle fallacies both in mathematics and outside of it. Besides the howlers, one of the most common fallacies is a misapplication of a rule, which is really a failure to note the conditions or assumptions under which that rule is valid. Whether you're working on a proof, reasoning in a business meeting, or simply watching a news report or advertisement, it's important to be very clear on the logical premises and rules that lie underneath the argument. Try to spot this fallacy somewhere in your regular interactions and let me know what you noticed. Thanks again for joining me for a math snack at the Research Cortex. We'll be back with another episode soon.